Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the WLBB Community Voice Program on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm your host today, Sarah Claudia Kane, and I hope everybody is having a wonderful start to your Wednesday so far. I'm excited to have Steve Davis in the studio here with me today, and probably most of our listeners recognize the name, if not the face. Steve has served our community as a pastor for years, and today he is with us to share about a new season of life he's just entered into. Thank you so much for being here with us today, and why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit more to our listeners. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Uh, Yes, my name's Steve Davis, and I was pastor at First Baptist Church Carrollton for 25 years. I grew up in Dothan, Alabama. Most of you have been through there going to the beach, and I was married for 28 years to Sherry, and uh, Sherry passed away five years ago. She was a wonderful school teacher in local schools and taught middle school, and we have two children. Tyler is 31, and Married to Caroline, they're having their first child in August, so I'll be a granddad. That's a big transition Mm -hmm. for me. And then my daughter, Natalie, is a freshman in college at the University of Alabama. Uh, I always got the award for the oldest dad with the youngest daughter, because I got married late in life, and then we had a child surprise, a wonderful surprise later in life, so uh, that's how I'm the age I am with a freshman in college. Uh, But anyway, she's left, and I've got the empty nest going on in retirement, and lots of Lots of changes in my life. (laughs) Well, it won't be an empty nest for long with that grandbaby coming. I'm I'm so excited. Yes. And I know, you know, you talked a a lot about your family. Your your whole family has really been a pillar in our community for so many years. The legacy uh, that Sherry left and your two kids. Natalie was a, a guest on Community Voice a few months ago. So I'm just so excited to have you on. And before we started, we were sitting here reminiscing about the first time we met. I think you said I was about one. One, (laughs) yeah. In fact, Sherry was babysitting for your older siblings, your Mm -hmm. your twin twin brother and sister. So I've known you all your life. Yeah, that's great. Yes, and now you've got a grandbaby whose due date is, I think, right? August 21st. Yeah, right after my brother and sister's 30s. I won't even say 30, birthday. 31st. Don't want to age right. them too much. Yeah, 31, 32, 31, 32. Yeah. So, so cool, yeah. It's amazing. Uh, time flies and things change, but we are braving those new seasons, and that's what we're going to talk a lot about today. But first, I want to I kind of go back. I'm always curious, especially pastors, what first kind of drew you to pursue preaching? I would say first, I grew up in a really good church, and uh, they nurtured me and encouraged me, and I love being in church, just love church. They gave me opportunities to speak and do ministry, and as I got into college and thinking about my career, I just felt comfortable doing church work and felt the calling was not dramatic, Mm -hmm. but it was just said, I felt like, this is what I want to do. This is what I enjoy doing, being around church people, and that became a calling, and it might surprise people, but I never felt called to preach. I felt called to be a minister. Mm-hmm. And so I did college ministry for 10 years, then transitioned into being a pastor. As it turned out, pastoring was a great fit for me. It just suited my skills, my interest. And so when First Baptist called me, I felt like they called me to be their minister. Part of what they wanted me to do was to preach, and so I did that faithfully and enjoyed it. But it was a part of what I did. So my calling has been <clears throat> to be a minister and to do that the best that I can. And I was lucky to do it here in mm-hmm. this community. It was just a great fit for me and for my family. We love Carrollton, love love the church so much. I, I feel so lucky to have had so many great relationships with, with so many people over those 25 years. Mm-hmm. And we know a lot of people would say the same about you. And it's funny, as you're sitting here kind of describing that you know I've recently in the past few years kind of gone into my own ministry and Uh it's not so much as something that you pursue it kind of pursues you yeah it did (laughs) it really in a way it really did I kind of fell into it uh, naturally easily Mm -hmm. and I remember when I went home from college and told my parents I decided to become a minister they weren't surprised at all. Oh. Yeah. My dad said, son, you'll never make any money being a preacher. You know? <laughs> I said, I don't care about that. But I 
they were not surprised. I don't think any of my friends were surprised mm-hmm. that I, I sensed a calling to do this. Yeah, just kind of fit you. It's what it's it, what it you really were meant did to do. Fit me, and I didn't know pastoring would fit me. Mm-hmm. But I did college ministry for ten years, and then decided to move on to something else. And the church called me, and I said, "Hey, this is really good. I like this." So, <laughs> well, I know this was probably a hard question, but what would you say? over the years have been kind of your favorite part about ministry working with the relationships that you build basically Mm -hmm. longevity has its place and for me to be a pastor for 25 years to to be at the hospital when the baby was born to watch that child grow Mm -hmm. up and graduate from high school graduate from college ask me to do the wedding to do the funeral for the grandmother all those things Uh, It's been so really great uh, to build relationships over 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed most of what ministry involved, and not all of it. Some of it was real, real hard, but uh, did a lot of funerals over those years, over over 400 funerals, and that's really hard. But uh, mostly just the people that you get to work with, Mm -hmm. church staff and all that, those relationships are very special. What would you say? And you mentioned, you know, funerals and losing those relationships. What about the challenges of, of being in in a church so long? I'm sure there was a lot of changes within the church that you kind of had to navigate. Yeah, the church got more difficult as 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 worship changed, worship styles changed, mm-hmm. as people uh, live more mobile lives. People were uh, gone a whole lot more than they were when I first came to, to Carrollton. Mm-hmm. We would have members who were there at church 50 Sundays out of the year. Then all of a sudden, people were traveling, travel ball, vacations, lake houses. People are gone a lot. So it became more difficult to do church, for sure, with all those changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know, you know, as we progress through life, we just face changes and new seasons and those can bring with them a certain amount of uncertainty as we kind of try to find our footing mm-hmm. and, and navigate those changes. And you just went through one of those, as we kind of talked about, when you retired mm-hmm. from 25 years at First Baptist. Mm-hmm. So what was that decision like? Um, how did that transition kind of unfold? Yeah. Well, the, the honest answer is when I got to <coughs> my retirement time, I was really burned out. Uh, burnout is a real thing, mm-hmm. and I had it. Uh, I think some of it was Sherry's illness and death going through that. Then after she died, going back to the church and continuing to try to minister and preach to the church was really, really difficult. And it drained me a lot of my my spirit, if you will. So when I retired, I was really, really, really tired and, and burned out and needed a, needed to to hang it up mm. I, I just didn't have the creativity that I wanted to have the desire that I needed to have but I hung on because the church was grieving and I was too and I couldn't just walk away so I wanted to see them through that transition that time of grief and then I hung on a couple more years because Natalie wanted me to she was in <laughs> high school <laughs> but I was ready to retire it was time to move on and to welcome somebody else into the into that so uh, it wasn't a hard decision in that sense. It's hard to walk away, though, when you've mm-hmm. had so many relationships. Then all of a sudden, when you retire, those are gone in the sense that you don't see those people anymore. Mm-hmm. And you're used to seeing them all the time, and especially like church staff relationships. Just to walk away from that, is it's really tough. Yeah, I think it's a good thing to kind of point out as people think, oh, retirement, you know, (laughs) go sit around, it's going to be so nice, but you lose a lot too. And I think that's what a lot of our listeners are going to kind of relate to with you and and learn how to walk through those new seasons and and face those changes with grace. And thank you so much for being here. We're going to take our first break to hear from our sponsors, Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Stay tuned for more on Community Voice. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be. 
for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Oak Mountain Academy has offered a challenging college preparatory education for 60 years. With over 500 graduates, we have maintained a 100% college acceptance rate. Over 90% of our students earn acceptance to their first choice of college or university, and over the past five years, our students have earned over $10 million in scholarship offers. Our students are creating a legacy. Come, be a part of our family, and create your own legacy today. To learn more, visit us at oakmountain.us. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm your host, Sarah Claudia Kane, here with our guest, Steve Davis, who served as a minister at First Baptist for 25 years, and he's talking about his transition into retirement and all the changes that came with that. And before we went to break, you mentioned that burnout that you felt and I'm so glad you mentioned it because I think it's so relatable to people and um, it's a hard thing to not only recognize but I think to act on um, because there's there's so much pressure in our society today to um, kind of put all those feelings away and always be strong and always push forward and I know for me I related to what you were saying because with my ministry you know sometimes I just need to be fed into. Um, I'm constantly encouraging people, which I love, but sometimes you need that encouragement. Was that mm-hmm. kind of what you were feeling in that time? Uh, yeah, but you know, saying goodbye to those those dear people mm-hmm. and transitioning was a really, really hard thing for me to do. Yeah, I knew I was ready for it, and I needed that. I needed a break from the pressure. Of being a pastor, there's a when I retired, there was a huge burden lifted off my shoulders. Mm-hmm. When you're the person responsible for a church, ultimately making those decisions every day, and you know preaching those sermons and doing those funerals and all that that goes with it, it's a big burden. You don't realize how big it is until you walk away from it. Mm-hmm. So I was, you know, happy for that feeling certainly, and I've in, enjoyed the challenge of a new phase of my life. Yes. And you've served so, so well for so long. So tell us, what has the adjustment been like from minister, from pastor, to congregation member? Okay, interesting part of that is, you know, I want nothing more than the success of that church because I love the church so much. And I want my successor there to be successful. And and he's in place. He's a great guy. I love him, love his family. So I felt like, the best way for me to do that would be to get out of the way. Mm-hmm. And so I have done that. And I have uh, not been going to First Baptist. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, during the pandemic, when I retired, I streamed church and tried to do that faithfully. That was hard, too, watching mm-hmm. that church where I had been so involved in it and then watching other people do that. And so I've tried to intentionally stay away, stay out of the way. I think that's the best thing for the church. And, and that's, I think, temporary. But at some point, I might ease back into that. But <clears throat> right now, I'm worshiping in Noonan. There's a church in downtown Noonan that I feel very comfortable there. So I'm enjoying my Sunday morning drive to Noonan and worshiping because I needed to get back into worship. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need each other. You know, I needed corporate worship. I needed to see people and shake hands and hug with hug people and, and be in that in the presence of other Christians in worship. So mm-hmm. right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to Noonan every Sunday morning and worshiping, enjoying it. Yeah, and I'm sure building some new relationships in a different way, I'm sure that's been fun too. It's been very refreshing. Yeah, it has. So uh, I was really tired of the streaming. Yeah. Yeah. So why do you think that these changes, these transitions are so hard for us? I think we don't like change, and it scares a lot of people. And and we're afraid of the unknown and how we're going to cope with a new chapter in our lives. I think it's kind of like any transition in your life. You have some fear. Going from junior high to high school, high school to college, there's always fear, anxiety, as to whether you can handle that or not. And this is a totally different thing for me now to to not be a pastor and with all those responsibilities gone. But I I found it to be actually very freeing and 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 challenging and fun. Mm-hmm. It's just a very different phase in my life to give as much as I gave for over 40 years 
as a minister and all of a sudden to, to walk away from that and now I wake up and say, how can I fill up my day today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to have it filled up for me. Yeah. Uh, on call all the time and all the meetings and stuff that go with being a church. And now here I am. Uh, every day's the same. It feels the same. And I, I have to decide what I'm going to do this day to make my life meaningful and to give me purpose for each, each and every day. And, uh, you know, I do have things that I enjoy doing. And I would say to anybody in retirement, you've got to have some things that you – some some hobbies mm -hmm. uh, that you enjoy doing. I love to play golf, so I do that two or three times a week, and that gets me around people. And I love to walk, so I walk a lot. And I find walking to be so therapeutic, and that's where I get creative ideas. That's where my mm -hmm. mind kind of settles down, and I relax. So I walk a lot, and I go to the gym, and I like art. I do some some painting and drawing. So those are things that keep me busy, and uh, I actually find it very fun to have these new challenges. Yeah, and that's important. I think you know you have to be active in making plans for yourself now, and that might be the hardest thing um, for people. You know, they <clears throat> go from, like you said, the calendar being filled up for them to, well, what do I do now? But and, I think and, that's good advice. And kind of finding out who I am, mm -hmm. and being a minister hasn't defined who I am as a person. That's people's perception of me as a, they saw me as a minister, but that's not who I am ultimately. I don't know if you followed the Masters golf tournament at all this past weekend. No, but the guy, husband did. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Scotty <laughs> Scheffler is the guy who won the tournament. And he, he admitted that on Sunday morning when he had the lead, he broke down and cried like a baby, he said. Because yeah. he said, I'm not sure if I'm ready for this moment, if I'm big enough to handle this pressure. And his wife said, golf doesn't define who you are. Win or lose, you're going to be the same person. I'm still going to love you. And I feel the same way about being a minister doesn't define who I am as a person. So now I'm trying to kind of discover that, you know, mm. you know what's important to me now that I'm not expected to do all these certain things. Yes. Yeah. So I'm kind of finding myself again in a way. It's nice. Yeah. That's very big. You know, I think that's a lot of fear people have, too, when – um, they're facing retirement or a change. You know, what? Am, who am I going to be without this? Without yeah. this nine to five job, I'm used to these responsibilities. Yeah. This is to define who I am for all these years now. Yeah. Who am I, really? Yeah. Apart from the apart from the work and the job yeah. that I did. Well, this has been wonderful, enlightening, some good advice so far. We have one more commercial break, and then we're going to hear more about these new seasons and changes and how to face them with faith. Thank you so much, Steve, and everybody stay tuned after this short break from our sponsors. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. As a graduate of Oak Mountain Academy, I found that my experience on the mountain prepared me beyond all expectations. As a junior at Auburn University, I approached my studies with great confidence thanks to what I learned at OMA. When I think back on my time on the mountain, I think of my teachers. Their genuine love and concern for me as a student was always evident, and now, as an adult, I still foster those relationships. I'm Carly Robinson, an Oak Mountain Academy alum. Visit oakmountain.us to see how you can offer your child an amazing opportunity to be a warrior. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program here on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. I'm your host, Sarah Claudia Kane, with our wonderful guest, Steve Davis. We're talking about transition from working and kind of seeing that as your identity to breaking from that when you retire and entering into a, a new season of life. Steve, what would you say have been kind of the biggest challenges when you've faced new seasons of life, whether it's retirement or other changes that you've gone through? My biggest challenge in retirement has been loneliness. 
I think a lot of people can relate to that. Mm-hmm. I think it's different if you retire and you still have your spouse or you have your children in town or grandchildren. I don't have any of that. So I've got a true empty nest. It gets kind of quiet around the house. Mm-hmm. And so I battle that, and, and I very intentionally uh, get around people, like when I play golf, go to the gym, uh, or maybe take some friends to lunch, that kind of thing. Because if not, you can turn very much inward, and that's not healthy for us. So anything I think people can do to be around others, volunteering in the community, those kind of things, to battle that loneliness. Because I don't have single friends my age that I can just call up and say, let's go to dinner tonight. Or mm-hmm. So the friends I do have are all married and have kids and all that. So it's been a real challenge. But I, I don't mind it. It's I don't mind being alone, but uh, – it's a constant challenge to, to try to be around people more. Yeah, it's something you have it's to... Because it's healthy. you got to work at it. Yeah, you have to learn to kind of balance that loneliness and um, be okay in the solitude, but also mm-hmm. be intentional about... That's exactly right. Findings. Well said. Well said. What would you say for you has been the role of your faith? What what role has your faith played in all of these transitions? Well, it's been the same it's been all my life in a sense. You know, I, I have a measure of faith. I don't pretend to have more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have a lot, sometimes a little, but I have a measure of faith. And I have a measure of hope every day. I have a measure of courage. I try to mix all that together. And, uh, you know, I think our biggest opportunity is to make decisions as Christian people. We make decisions every day how we're going to live our lives and how we spend our time, how we spend our money, how we make decisions. And so my faith informs all of that. It's the center of my life, and, and the things that I do revolve around that. So it continues to play a role. I trust God that God is involved in my life, whether I feel it or not. I have a trust that God is, His hand is in, in my life and leading my life. That's how I've always tried to live my life. And we know, we, we talked about it earlier, you know, when we go through these changes, there's that uncertainty i think is what mm-hmm. is the hardest aspect of it just not knowing yeah. what the future is going to hold how we should really navigate it so how can we kind of practically turn to god's guidance listen out for that that guidance mm-hmm. and and trust him practically because i know it can be it can be hard for some people to really understand yeah um you know i, I like to anchor myself in traditions i find God speaks to me in those traditions of church and family traditions. I, I certainly anchor myself in that. Uh, I try to start my day with, you know, God, here I am. This is your day. Let's do this together. You know, let's let's get up and face this day with courage. Uh, I uh, was also struck by the Tiger Woods story at the Masters because he's gone through so much over the last 12 months to get recovered from that accident to play golf again and he said you know every day's a challenge you have to face it with courage and strength and that's kind of how i'm facing my my retirement every day's a new day let's, let's accept the challenge let's do our best to be the best person that we can be to be the best version of myself that i can possibly be with god as a part of my life mm. and that's how it works for me i don't pretend to know what i'm going to be doing 10 years from now i don't really worry about that to try to enjoy the day mm. and trust God to, to lead me. I do think it's important to learn to give yourself away. Uh, when you're lonely or, or retired, it's easy to focus so much on yourself. But as a Christian, you got to figure out ways to give back to others and to your community. And that gets your mind off of yourself and onto others. And I think in that process, you discover God's presence mm. in your life. That's very true, and that's really good advice. And we're lucky we live in a community where there's plenty of ways to, so to many get ways. involved. So many, yeah. It's a great community. So what would you say are some plans that you have? I know you said you just try to go day by day, but I know recently you've done some hiking. You said you like to play golf. What are some things on the horizon for you in this, this new season? Well, I've decided I'm going to stay in Carrollton for sure for a while. I could move to Florida and be near the granddaughter, but for now I'm going to stay put here because Natalie's in in Alabama, so I'll I'll be here. Uh, I'm going to continue to do more art. I love art. It's creative for me, and it 
helps me express my faith. And so I'm going to do a lot more of that and, and do some traveling. Mm. I'm going on a cruise this September with some friends going to Alaska. And I want to see more of our world, so I'm going to do lots mm-hmm. of traveling, I hope. Yes, I love to travel. That's that's something um, my mom, when she retired, she she always said she wanted to travel more, and we've done a lot of that. Yeah. So, Where's your, a place you want to go that you haven't been? Oh, goodness. There's so many places in the U.S. I would love to go out west. I, have to, I haven't been out west either. Yeah, yeah, I would love to go there, mm-hmm. spend, some, spend some time on a ranch, be a... A real ranch hand for a few days. Uh-huh. I think that would be fun. Sounds like a Montana trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've got some great plans. I know you're excited for that grandbaby to mm-hmm. get here. Mm-hmm. Spoil her rotten, I'm yep. sure. Yep, I can't wait for that. I will definitely spoil her. Well, I know a lot of our listeners have gotten a lot from this conversation so far, whether um, they're going through retirement, facing retirement, sending kids off to college, or maybe they just lost a spouse. Um, You know, you've given so many good nuggets and pieces of advice, but is there any last words of wisdom you would want to leave our listeners with if they're facing a new season of life? Keep growing. We went to California years ago and saw the redwood forest. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to see those trees. They're hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. Mm-hmm. And guess what? They're still growing. Wow. Yeah. I like to joke that I have a few rings around my trunk as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to keep learning. Keep challenging yourself to be a better version of yourself, to be a better Christian, a better person of faith. And So don't ever stop growing. Mm. That's good. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope anybody facing a new season today that you'll trust God, not think too much about the future, like Steve said, and just take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful advice. And get active in our community. Find ways to get out there and serve and Learn to balance kind of that that empty schedule also with creating new things to do, finding who you are apart from that job. That was, I think, one of the biggest pieces of advice that you gave today. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We wish you the best of luck in whatever you decide to do in the future. And thank you for everything you've done for this community in the past 25 years. I know we've got a lot of people listening who you've touched their lives, um, my family included. They've touched mine, too. Well, thank you so much. Uh Thank Thank you, you listeners. And we'll catch you next time here on Community Voice.